Hi, Ben with YNAB here, and in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to the YNAB app. But more importantly, I'm gonna teach you the four rules of the YNAB method. Now, before I ask you to adopt a handful of rules into your life, I think it's only fair that I tell you why. Think about the difference between buying a movie ticket with cash versus buying a movie ticket with a gift card. I don't know about you, but I've never felt guilty or anxious or confused about how I spent a gift card. In fact, spending a gift card is pretty fun. It gives me permission to spend. By following the four rules, you can make it so all your spending has that same clarity and permission to spend feeling that a gift card gives you. Sound good? Let's get into it. Just like Mint, you can sync up your bank with YNAB to import transactions automatically. But if you'd rather do things yourself, you can also add unlinked accounts. If you're setting up a credit card, YNAB offers different options depending on how you pay it. If you regularly pay in full, you can do that. But if you're carrying a balance, YNAB can help you create a plan for paying it down. You can always just enter what you're currently paying and move on, but you can also see the impact of different payment amounts or what you'd need to reach certain payoff dates. Once you've added your accounts, what's your first step toward gift card clarity? Well, it's easy to have clarity with a gift card because it has a clearly defined purpose and a certain amount of money set aside for that purpose. With a movie gift card, I'm not choosing between seeing a movie or buying coffee or saving for retirement. I'm choosing between Fast and Furious 16 and Star Wars Episode 20. You can get that same level of purpose and clarity with your dollars by giving every dollar a job. This is rule one. To start, you need to create a plan that represents you. And YNAB gives you loads of flexibility here. In the edit screen, you can rename categories, create new ones, delete categories, move them around, create new groups to better organize your categories, and add emojis. It's whatever you want. Not only that, but once you've created your categories, you can create focused views that only show you certain categories. So you're not having to scroll through your whole plan every time you go shopping. The edit screen also lets you create targets for your categories. A target tells YNAB how much money you wanna set aside for an expense, whether it's for spending or saving. The easiest place to start is by putting targets on all of your monthly bills. You just tell YNAB how much you'll need and when you'll need it by. You can also create targets for weekly expenses. Just tell YNAB how much you need each week and it does the math for you. At this point in Mint, you'd be done. But remember, we're after gift card clarity. You can write $500 on a groceries gift card, but that doesn't do you any good until you actually load that card up with money. Same thing here. To load up your categories, you can just type the amount right into the category. Here you'll see $500 has left ready to assign and is now ready for grocery spending. And yeah, when I said give every dollar a job, I meant every dollar. A mint plan is based on your monthly paychecks, but a YNAB plan is based on every dollar you have right now. It's the full picture of your current financial situation. This is where targets come in handy. You can use the auto assign feature to tell YNAB to fill as many targets as it can with the money you have right now. So that's rule one. But is that rule by itself really gonna give you gift card clarity and peace of mind? Let's face it, it's usually not the mortgage payment or the internet bill that's causing financial frustration. It's a check engine light or a broken phone or the annual subscription you forgot about. We make plans that look like this when life actually looks like this. We're gonna need another rule to safeguard our clarity. And that's rule two, embrace your true expenses. With rule two, you break those non-monthly expenses down by treating them like monthly subscriptions. So instead of having to scrape together money for car registration all at once, you set a target in YNAB that breaks it down into regular monthly chunks. You may not know when your car is going to break, I don't, but you know it will eventually. So you can start putting some money aside every month with a monthly savings builder target. By breaking down your non-monthly expenses in YNAB, you're not only prepared for those curveballs, but you're also turning this roller coaster into something normal and predictable. With a plan like this, I can blow $200 on a super fancy dinner and not only see that I planned for that, I have permission to spend, but also see that all my other categories are untouched. Clarity. By the way, this is why we don't include next week's paycheck in ready to assign. When I look at these numbers, I wanna know that I have that money right now. There's no better clarity than that. 
That's also why people with variable income tend to love YNAB. It doesn't force them to guesstimate this month's income. Their plan is based on the dollars they have right now, just like everybody else. What about credit cards? Do those screw with our clarity? No, because anytime you spend with a credit card, YNAB moves what you spent from that category to that credit card's payment category. That way, you always have the money set aside to cover your credit spending. No new debt. Okay, but what if you spend more than you planned? Well, YNAB makes it easy to change your plan when you change your mind. You're the boss after all, you should have that freedom. And we achieve that freedom by rolling with the punches, the third rule of the YNAB method. When you spend more than you planned, you look at your categories that still have money in them and you ask yourself, what matters to me less than buying this gift? Then YNAB moves money from that category to cover that overspending and boom. Rule three gives you flexibility without losing any clarity or security. And finally, let's talk about the future. Mint focused on this month, this month's income for this month's bills. But at YNAB, we have a loftier goal for you. We want to get you to the point where you're paying this month's bills with last month's income so that you have breathing room. This is the final rule, aging your money. Maybe you've covered everything in this month's plan, but still have dollars left over. Or maybe you just got a tax refund. With YNAB, you can stash that money in next month's plan so you can start to get ahead. And when you do get that full month ahead, you'll be surprised how much peace of mind it gives you. And that's it, your quick introduction to YNAB, the method, and the app. If you wanna dive deeper, we have a bunch of resources in the description just for you. We've got free live workshops running specifically for people coming to YNAB from Mint. That's a great place to ask questions. And we've got an award-winning world-class support team ready to help you with any bumps you experience along the way. And if you're still on the fence about YNAB, we've got a 34-day fully featured free trial for you to give this thing a test drive. What have you got to lose? But that's it for me. Have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for watching.